hardware of this computer is all set up and ready to go, but the new hard drive is still completely blank. So that means we've got to install an operating system on it. Now you could be old school and use a CD or DVD disc, but today we're going to do it the more modern way by creating a USB boot drive. Today we'll be installing Linux Mint, so before anything we need the Linux Mint ISO file. The ISO is essentially a disk image that contains all the files required to install Linux Mint. To start we're going to head over to the official Linux Mint website, open our browser and go to www.linuxmint.com. Once we're there we'll navigate to the download section and we'll be given a choice between three different desktop environments, Cinnamon, Mate and XFCE. If you're new to Linux Mint I recommend the Cinnamon edition as that's the most popular and user friendly and the most full featured. But if you want something a bit lighter, go for the Mate one. If you want something really light, go for the XFCE one. That will run on some really old computers. And even if you have a tiny bit of RAM, you can probably still run Linux Mint XFCE. Click on the version we want, and then we'll be redirected to a download page. Here we'll have a few mirror links to choose from to download the ISO file. Pick one that's closest to your location or where your VPN is to get the fastest download speed. There should also be a torrent link on there, a magnet link, so you can use whichever you prefer. I'd usually use a torrent, but for this example we're going to do a direct download. The ISO file is usually around 2 gigabytes in size, so it might take a few minutes to download depending on our internet speed. The ISO file that we're downloading is a disk image format that contains an exact copy of the data, as would be on an optical disk such as a CD or DVD. The name ISO comes from the international body that sets the standards for this file type. Essentially, an ISO file is a snapshot of a disk which includes the file system structure and the actual data. It's often used for distributing software, operating system installations or other large files that need to be copied onto physical disks or mounted directly into a computer. On the other hand, DMG disk image files are the Mac equivalent of ISO files. Now, while ISO is commonly used on Windows and Linux environments, Mac users often encounter DMG files for mounting their virtual drives, particularly when downloading software or applications applications. So if you're on a Mac or installing Mac OS, you might be using one of these DMG files instead. The installer we're using, Belina Etcher, can handle both types of files. You can also use ISO or DMG files to run an OS in a virtual machine if you ever choose to do that. While the ISO is downloading, let's set up the tool we're going to use to create the bootable USB drive, Belina Etcher. It's a free, easy to use tool for flashing images to USB drives and SD cards. Open up our web browser again and go to belina.io slash etcher. That's the official website for Belina Etcher. Once we're on the site, we'll see a prominent download button. Click it to download the version that matches our operating system, whether it be Windows, Mac OS or Linux. If we're using Windows, the installer will be an .exe file. When the installer is downloaded, open it to begin the installation process. Follow the on-screen instructions to install Belina Etcher. It's a simple process, just click Next and accept the default settings. Once installed, open Belina Etcher from our Start menu or Applications folder. It might even open automatically. Now we've got both the ISO and the software ready, let's prepare the USB drive. We'll use this particular drive to install the operating system on our computer. Now you want a USB drive with at least 4GB of space available. We're going to plug it into a USB port on our computer. Try and use a USB 3.0 port if you can, because that'll be a bit faster. Make sure it's empty and we've backed up any important data on the drive, because creating this as a bootable drive will completely wipe it, it'll erase everything on it. You can check the USB drive's capacity by opening it up in File Manager, make sure it's detected and sure the correct size. Now that we have everything ready, let's open up Belina Etcher and get started. When we first launch Belina Etcher, we'll be greeted by a simple interface with three main buttons, flash from file, select target and flash. First thing we need to do is select the ISO file we've just downloaded. Click on the flash from file button to browse our computer. Locate and select the ISO we downloaded earlier. It will usually be in our downloads folder unless we've already moved it. Once we've selected the ISO file, it will appear in the main window of Etcher. Next, click on the Select Target button. Belina Etcher will show us a list of available drives. Here, we'll see our USB drive listed. It might show up as something like USB drive or the model of the USB stick we've inserted. Make sure you select the correct USB drive. This is critical because selecting the wrong drive will erase all the data on that drive. Once we've selected the USB drive, click Continue. Now comes the exciting part, flashing the image. Click the flash button to begin the process. Belina Etcher will start writing the ISO to our USB drive. This process can take a few minutes depending on our USB drive speed and our system performance. We'll see a progress bar that will show how much is left to complete. 
Once the process is done, we'll see a flash complete message and Etcher will notify us that the USB drive has now been flashed with the ISO file we downloaded earlier. This means our USB drive is now ready to boot our OS. We can now safely eject the USB drive from our computer and we're all set, ready to use it for installation. And there we go, we've successfully created our bootable USB drive using Belina Etcher. We can use the same procedure to install Linux, Mac OS or Windows on our computer, although Windows can sometimes need a few extra steps to make things go smoothly. It's often best to use Rufus or the official Microsoft media creation tool for installing Windows. Most Linux distributions come with a helpful feature known as booting from live CD or live USB, which allows us to run the operating system directly from the USB drive without making any permanent changes to the computer's hard drive. This live session is especially useful for testing out the OS before deciding to install it, or for troubleshooting with any operating system. Additionally, using a live USB can help when trying to recover data from a system that may have failed to boot. In contrast, Mac OS and Windows typically require a more traditional installation process, where the operating system is permanently installed onto the computer's internal storage. Before we continue, we're just going to have a quick word from today's video sponsor. Covered wooden signs have a timeless charm blending rustic warmth with protection from the elements to preserve both their beauty and message. Covered wooden signs are just the perfect addition to any park or woodland trail. Let's build more of them and bring more elevated dry sheltered overhangs to every corner of the world. The optimal location for a covered wooden sign is next to an open top waste bin, especially if that bin is overflowing with sugary sticky waste and fruit scraps. This message was brought to you by the Committee for the Advancement of Wasps and was funded by the Wasp Nest Advocacy Organization. Before we continue any further, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you can hit the like button. It lets YouTube know I'm doing something right.